that's what we're saying, it's that it's a low vision aid that will assist many different people, mm. we hope, um, and that you can use it almost like a part of your toolbox, you know, I, I use it for this purpose because that's how it suits me, you know, I might depend on it a lot more than Megan, and Megan might depend on it a lot more than someone else, yeah. that's that's the beauty of it. Yeah, um, and it being a user-led project, it's, we want the people who are going to use it to tell us what they want. Yeah, this, so. that's what's so unique about this project is that me and Meg are both visually impaired and we're leading on the project yeah. as, you know, researching into what do we want and then do you all agree, let's unite and kind of find out for ourselves and try and solve this problem together. Um, that's how we have to do this project. We have to hear from everybody about their views, what they want, what they like, what they don't like, mm. to perfect this, because it's never been done before. So. No, I'm sure you're both very excited, uh, like I am, that you know these days, um, uh, low vision aids and, and, and uh, tools of access mm. uh, for those with a disability have now become embedded within the kind of mainstream. You know, I've got an iPad here, or an iPhone, or any sort of smartphone, mm. has apps and tools on them, um, which years ago you would have had to have had a, a specialist piece, piece of equipment to mm. uh, to use or to, to access. Yeah, I mean you're not even talking that long ago, you're mm. talking no. two, three years. The time that we've finished school and started mm. employment, yeah. that's everything's changed. everything's changed. We can now utilise mainstream technology and use it as a low vision aid, which is insane I think it's yeah. it's so cheap you're talking about I have as you were saying I, I earlier I have an app that's um, basically a CCTV monitor yeah um, which enlarges things and changes color contrast I paid 20 pounds for an app that does that on my iPad and if I were to go to um, a company that specialized in making those that those types of things it would cost me over three thousand pounds yeah Easily. <laughs> but I, th I think what's nice is that it's one of those things that, especially with this app, because it's designed for you to use on your phone, you can be walking around holding it in your hand and people will just assume that you're texting someone if you bump into them because you're looking <laughs> at it. Yeah. yeah. It's not... It's yeah, you're using a piece of technology that's not out of the ordinary for somebody to be using in yeah. a public space, which is what you want. You don't want to be out, you know, standing out of the crowd for the wrong reason. No, exactly. And actually, that leads me on to my uh, next question as well, which is to do with um, what theatres can be doing, or what they should be doing, to help those with a visual impairment. Um, with this app, does that mean that uh, stewards and uh, people working in, in a public space will not require uh, training? in working with visually impaired people. Is that going to take away from that or do you think that will still be required alongside um, this app that you're developing? I think it's it's still required yeah. because it's not, the app isn't going to be to everyone's like it. We're not assuming that every visually impaired person is going to use it. We're making it because we know it's something that's going to benefit us and a lot of other peop visually impaired people that we know but whether that's something and that's gonna... anyone who has any kind of access yeah. need yeah. or you know the, uh, there's an umbrella there yeah. and everyone is included under that yeah, yeah. okay but it's but to say everyone's going to use it so you don't need to do it anymore isn't mm -hmm. a realistic and i mean you know life doesn't work like that people need to be aware of what's going on i mean we are in 2014 and still disability and access needs are lacking behind um, yeah. And fortunately, I think the arts venues are trying to do something about it. They seem to be trying to start the revolution in making arts venues accessible for everyone. Um, so hopefully this will just be another thing that is is helping them do what they're doing. It's not, um, this is what you need and that's it. It's everything combined. Yeah. Fantastic. And and finally, tell us when this app will become available. You've got another six months working on it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so halfway through, just finished one user testing, got more to come, um, a lot more development work, a yeah. lot more changes, <laughs> but all for the better. Um, yeah. Very excited. So hopefully we have a soft launch 
um, in October where we start testing natively, which means start testing um, in the in the iStore. But official launch will be at the end of December, beginning of January. But it will still only be a pilot because it will still only exist for the WMC and the Torch. Okay, yes. Um, it won't be in every public arts venue. But that may be a long-term ambition. Absolutely. Watch yeah. this space. Watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Youcanproduction.org.uk You Can Go is supported by the Digital R&D Fund for the Arts in Wales, NEFTA, Arts and Humanities Research Council and public funding by the National Lottery through the Arts Council of Wales. Dow Commissions, disabilityartsonline.org.uk